fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Well, all over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one the have that happy people have to say. Yep, take Mickey Mantle, born in Oklahoma, star with the New York Yankees. From out west, where a man's a man, and what a man is Mantle. Say, Mickey's been eating Wheaties for years. Now listen, here's another champion with plenty of zing in his swing. Zing! That's a service ace for champion Pancho Gonzalez, a native Californian. He hits them hard, he makes them swish, and in the morning enjoys his dish of Wheaties. Sure, lip smack and taste tickling, ribs sticking good. And there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties, and you'll be do, 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 and okay, okay. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Throughout the world, the magic spell of Christmas Eve spread like a caressing blanket. In Omaha, 25-year-old Eric Flint and his bride of two weeks sat near the fireplace of a poorly furnished room. They, too, were wrapped in the spell of Christmas as they watched the candles burning on a Christmas tree. It was a small tree that stood on a table. There was room for only half a dozen candles. My first Christmas tree, Abby. You mean to say you never had a Christmas tree, Eric? Not even when you were a little boy? There used to be one in the orphanage, but there were a lot of us. You've had more than your share of hard luck. I sure hope things will be different in the West. I do wish I might go with you. So do I, dear. But it'll be better if you wait until I find the right town and get established. I'll send for you just as soon as I can. I'll not even be able to write to you until I know where you'll be. You write and hold the letters. You can send them to me all at once when I have an address. Oh, Eric. Eric, dear, I'll write one every day. By next Christmas, we'll be together in our own home in the West. And then we'll have a great big Christmas tree. That was Eric Flint's first Christmas tree. Eric went west in January and met unforeseen hardship and discouragement. Finally, he found a job in Osage. His first letter since leaving Abigail in Omaha was written on Christmas Eve. At long last, I have found a position and a community that offers the opportunity to get ahead. I am working in the bank, and I think banking will be my career. Please tell me how soon you can come west to join me in Osage. I pen this letter by the candlelight of a tiny Christmas tree in this small bedroom. That was Eric's second Christmas tree, his last for many years. Dear Abigail, I have waited one month for a reply to my letter of Christmas Eve. Sometimes the mails are robbed by highwaymen and Indians. This may have been the case. So I shall repeat what I said previously.
Dear Abigail, I have written several letters to you without the favor of a reply. Dear Abigail, this must be my final attempt. Eric finally concluded that his long absence had killed Abigail's love. He wrote no more. In ten years, he was one of the wealthiest men in Osage and one of the most despised. It was early on a Christmas Eve when he entered his office through a rear door accompanied by two men. All right, sit down. Cooper, you and Butch are good gunmen. Gun better? I'm hiring both of you as bodyguards. I've heard that a mask man's looking for me. Didn't Butch tell you? No. And I was in Washoe when the mask man came there making inquiries. You didn't tell him where to find me, did you, Butch? No, but he'll find you sooner or later. Someone you out sharp in one of your shrewd deals? I don't know, but I'm taking no chances. I want one or the other of you near me at all times. If hey, get your... Oh, it's only Hammond. Mr. Flint, I got to see you on business. Well, then see me tomorrow during business hours. Tomorrow? Why, tomorrow's Christmas. What of it? Anyway, that'll be too late to talk about what I have in mind. I owe you some money. Your mortgage is due next week. If you'd extend that mortgage for one year, I'm sure I'll be able to pay. I never extend a mortgage. Mr. Flint, I came to ask you for a hundred dollars in cash. You could put it on the mortgage. A hundred dollars? Well, if you think you're... Well, then fifty dollars. No. You already owe more than you can pay. I'll expect the money next week. When the mortgage is due, I'll foreclose. You'll have to foreclose, but... Could you let me have just twenty dollars? You're getting my place dirt cheap. From a hundred dollars down to twenty. What do you want the money for? Mr. Flynn, I want to buy my boy some things for Christmas. Christmas presents. He's just a little critter. He thinks Santa Claus will sure enough come to visit our house tonight. He's too young to He know must that... learn that life is full of disappointments. The sooner he learns it, the better. I all right, Mr. Flynn. I'll have to tell my boy that. I have no time for settlement. It interferes with business. Hey, look, the window, the face, the mask. There's the mask man. All right, get him, get him. There, there he goes. It's around the corner of the building. Well, get your horses, get after him. Bring him back dead or alive. All right, come on, Cooper. Uh, we'll see where that critter was looking for the boss. Get up, get up, get up. Hi, son. Oh, what's the matter, Dad? We must have a little talk, son. Uh, kind of a man-to-man talk. Would you go up here in the room, Mary? Yes, I'll go. Dad, is something wrong? Well, son, this is sort of a bad year. You know, everyone's hard up. Sure, I know, Dad. A lot of folks are worse off than we are in other parts of the country. Well, old Santa has a pretty big job taking care of them all. I wanted you to sort of understand it, Donnie, because he might have to skip Osage. I didn't want you to be disappointed. Oh, you're fooling me. So I'll be more surprised when I see the Christmas tree he's going to bring. The things for you and Mom and the knife for me. But son, I, I He'll just... He'll be here. You just wait and see. All right, lad. Good night. Night, Dad. What did you tell him, Dave? Mary... What is it? Dave... That look in your face. I tried to tell him Santa Claus would never find people as far from everything as we are. But the faith, the faith of that child, Mary. What are you going to do? I'm, I'm going to have another talk with Eric Flint. Flint's bodyguards rode hard in pursuit of the masked man, but were quickly outdistanced. After a couple of miles, they gave up the chase and turned their tired horses back toward town. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy, 
As they halted and dismounted behind the bank, they little suspected that in their absence, Dave Hammond had returned and was with Eric Flint for the second time in less than an hour. Hey, the one opened the door and found themselves staring into the muzzle of a heavy pistol. Step right in, but keep your hands at shoulder level. Well, I told idea. you I wanted one of you to be with me at all times. Now look what's happened. Great day. Kick that door closed with your heel. Now draw your gun slowly and drop him to the floor. You'd better do as he says. He's out of his mind. All right. Kick him toward me. Hey, boss, how'd this happen? How'd Hammond get your rope like that? He came in while you were gone. Threatened me with a club while he took the gun out of my desk. What is it, Hammond? A stick up? Call it what you want. My son's in bed right now, dreaming about Christmas. And by thunder, he's not going to be disappointed. Hammond, I'll make you pay for this if it's the last thing I do. I'm going to give Donnie a Christmas tree and presents if it's the last thing I do. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Jenny is ten, and is she good? She'd skip rope champ of the neighborhood. She's so quick because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios. 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 That makes sense. Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O, and you'll agree. You like that delicious toasted oat flavor, and Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowl full, add good fresh milk, dig in, and start getting your go power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfasts every day with delicious Cheerios and milk, and get that good go power. Then folks will say... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now, to continue. After outdistancing the gunman who had been hired to protect Eric Flint, the Lone Ranger rode in a wide circle to reach a woods near town. Toto was waiting in camp at the edge of the woods. Oh, oh he's a steady big fellow. You long time in town, Kimosabe. Did you find Eric Flint? Yes, Toto. Everything we heard about him from the people in Washoe is true. What do you think of Flint? Well, he's to be pitied, Toto. He's a bitter man without a friend in the world. You talked to him? I didn't have a chance. The gunman saw me at the window. I had to leave in a hurry. I think... What matter? Look over there in the clear space between the woods and town. Oh, yeah. Four men coming this way. Otto, in the moonlight, one of those men looks like Hammond. The man ahead might be Eric Flint. Stay here with the horses. I'm going to try to get closer. The four men traveled south in single file along the edge of the woods, while the Lone Ranger, moving silently, paralleled their course in the shelter of the trees. He saw that the hands of the two gunmen and Eric Flint were tied behind their backs, while Hammond, walking in the rear, carried a gun. They turned into the woods and halted in front of a hunter's cabin. Hammond watched his prisoners closely as they entered, and he lighted a candle. This here, Flint, is where you and your hired gunslingers are going to spend Christmas. You want my property. Well, you'll get it. I'm moving out with my family the day after tomorrow. But tomorrow my son is going to have a Christmas present. You better drop that gun. It, it's dropped. He's smashed. Hey, he's the one who was looking in the window. Hammond, you must have returned to Flint's office geared for trouble. I, I did. Another gunslinger working for you, huh, Flint? He's not working for me. I've been looking for you, Flint. I have something to tell you that can wait. I have new plans. Hammond, I'm going to tie you hand and foot. Then I'm going to tie the feet of these gunmen. All of you lie face down on the floor. Anyone who makes a fast move is likely to be hurt. What about me? You lie down too, Flint. So I have everyone tied. And you're going with me. I don't know who you are or why you captured me, but I can make it worth your while to let me go. Not yet, Flint. I have money, plenty of money. You let me go and help me to jail Hammond for what he did, and then... You'd uh, jail him tonight? I certainly would. What is Christmas Eve? Ah. It may mean more to you in an hour. 
Oh, who lives in that White House straight ahead? Why should I tell you? Tell me. All right. Dan Dickerman. Do you hold a mortgage on the property? Yes. We'll call on him. Come on, little bit. Happy sounds of laughter and gay voices could be heard from Dickerman's small house when the Lone Ranger halted Silver and dismounted. Then helped Flint to the ground. Right. Yep, yep. Hear that, Flint? I hear it. We're going in there. I think you're due for a surprise. I don't know why the Dickerman family for Shield so happy. Going to lose their home in a few weeks. They're happy because they're alive and well. And they have each other. All right, we'll go inside. Whoever you are, come in. And welcome. Come right in and join the party. Come on, dear. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> what? It's Mr. Flint. This man is my prisoner. Your prisoner? prisoner? Suppose I told you your contract with Eric Flint was illegal. Legal? Suppose Eric Flint could be put into jail the way he has treated a number of people. That's not true. You can't put me in jail. Every agreement I've ever made is legal and binding. Be quiet, Flint. Dickerman, we can't put Flint in jail without a complaining witness. Will you come with me at once and ride to the county seat? I wouldn't put any man in jail on Christmas Day. Not even Eric Flint. You might try Joe Blake. He lives across the street. He's owing money on a mortgage. Thanks, Dickerman. Come on, Flint, and call on Blake. <laughs> a sudden hush descended on the merriment in Joe Blake's humble home when the banker and the masked man entered. Here's a chance for you to take advantage of a situation, Blake. While Blake, his wife, and his children stood staring at the masked man and Eric Flint with his hands tied... The Lone Ranger suggested a trip to the county seat. Flint can't foreclose on your mortgage if he's in jail. Well, I can't put a man in jail on Christmas Day. You'll have to get someone else. And that shouldn't be hard. Over half the folks around here owe cash to Banker Flint. You try Sam Hawks or Tom Kane. Sam Hawks refused to jail a man on Christmas Day, and so did Thomas Kane. And there were others who refused to take advantage of the chance to evade payment of a just debt to the banker. During the visits, Eric Flint became increasingly silent and thoughtful. And after the last of the visits, the masked man and Flint stood beside the great horse Silver. Strange, isn't it, Flint? We couldn't find a single man that would put you in jail on Christmas. I can't understand it. Every one of those men has cause to hate me. Everyone would profit by putting me in jail. Not one of them would do it. What is there about Christmas? Well, I... Yes, it's a woman to love, children to make happy. Well, how much longer are you going to drag me around like this from one house to another? Now we'll return to that cabin in the woods. I want Hammond to hear what I say. Mrs. Hammond had never known a Christmas Eve so filled with worry, unhappiness, and despair. She knew that her husband had left the house, grimly determined to find money for his son's Christmas. Her worry increased with the dragging hours, and it was nearly midnight when she heard footsteps outside the house. She hurried to the door and opened it. Dave. Oh, Dave, where have you been? It's a long story, Mary. I, I called on Eric Flint. Where did you hear about him? Oh, what did you do to oh, him? It wasn't me. It was the mask man. But let me tell you from the beginning. Mary, years ago, Eric Flint sent for his wife to come and join him. But he never heard from her. That's what made him so bitter. He wrote a lot of letters, but she never answered them. Uh -huh. The fact is, his wife replied to the very first letter and said she was leaving Omaha at once. She asked Flint to meet her in Cheyenne, but he never got that letter. Why didn't his wife come here to Osage? Well, there's another town called Osage. She went there, and no one knew about Eric Flint. Her money ran out, and she stayed there, working. She's been there ever since. Oh, my sakes alive. But, Dave, how do you know all this? A masked man brought the news. And he brought Flint a whole packet of letters his wife had written and never mailed because she didn't know where to send them. You should have seen Flint, though. When he got the news, he was a changed man. He let out a yell and waved his arms and started shouting, What a Christmas! What a Christmas! Mary, you never saw such a changed man. You spoke of a masked man who brought the news in the letters. How did he know? Well, he was in the other town called Osage, and he heard about Abigail Flint and how she'd come west and was terribly worried because she couldn't find her husband. He told her about an Eric Flint who ran a bank and promised to find out if he was the same man. 
So he came here. So she trusted him with the letters to bring here. Yes, yes. My thing. Open that door, get her wife. Oh, that's Eric Quinn. I'd never recognize his voice. Why, he sounds happy. What? Well, there you are, Quinn. Why, it's a tree. A tree, ma'am. But now be careful, Butch. He's yeah. through the doorway. Oh. We don't want to break off any of those branches. Yeah. We should Howdy, Mrs. Hammond. This is for your son. Oh, but... But, Mr. Flynn... What's keeping Cooper so long? Uh, he's coming. He's loaded. Down. Oh, I see him. Hurry up there, Cooper. We must get those toys and clothes spread out. You're loaded me down with stuff. Mr. Flynn, all those things... I almost had to pull a gun on Jake to get him to open up his store. Look, Mary, look. A knife and shoes and a wooden gun, a woolen shirt. I... These all are down. There's me. lots more in those packages, Mary. It's some things for you and Dave as well. But you two will have to hang the trimmings on the tree and fix the candles. I have a million things to do. I've got to get a wagon and a strong team and load her down with Christmas presents for my wife. Oh, Dave told me about her, Eric. I'm so glad. You two, Butch and Cooper, what are you standing around for? Just getting a breath for Well, never mind your breath. You have other presents to deliver. Now, you go back to the store and get those things for Dickerman and Blake and all the others. Yes, sir. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Tell them I've left town. I'm going to meet my wife. And when I get back, we'll talk about renewing all those mortgages for another year, or two years, or as long as it takes for the boys to pay them off. We'll tell them, boss. And tell them all a Merry Christmas. A Merry Christmas from me. Well, if you don't mind me saying so, boss, those folks will sure wonder what got into you. Well, tell them. Tell them what got into me. Tell them it's the Christmas spirit. Tell them it happened to me just like it did to Ebenezer Scrooge. He had the spirits to help him. And I, I had the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.